This machine is a great uh, step sequencer with uh, six samples at a time and a, long, a lot more under the hood but we will just uh, talk about a sound source to be played live, to program live, when we want to program live. So uh, its architecture makes it that we can just play those six sounds at a time and when a sound is selected we can play it chromatically with this uh, little uh, switch okay but um, if we want to play uh, some cool finger finger drumming with it we are limited by two things so the disposition of the cells of course i could change the kick with the snare or the hi-hat with the tone uh, but it's lateral and I like to play uh, vertical, okay, not horizontal. So this is the first limitation. So what I, I did here, I used this controller. So if I display it like this, it's like an MPC. Okay, this controller is up on Ableton on a MIDI track. And this MIDI track is going to this place, okay? So... I have all my sound here, 16 pads. At a precise uh, pitch, okay? Like here, this is just one pitch. What I was looking for is to be able to play it on several pitch and a way that I can hit it, hit them uh, anytime I want. So um, this uh, Novation Launchpad I can switch it like this and that way instead of having only one display and going to the octave with this switch I will have all of them side by side like this okay to the low so I will have a lot of other information uh, talking about the behavior of each sounds and um, also talking about a uh, minimum control with this other controller to control also the pitch of each sound. So for example, I have the pitch of the kick here and the snare, etc, etc. So of course I can do this in the machine, but the machine I can select only one track, so one sound, and all those knobs correspond to just this sound. Okay, so the way I work with it for today, I will have just the example of pitch, but later on, uh, I will see how I can add other control and I have, have them under the end simultaneously instead of selecting a track and having the parameter just for this track. Okay. First, how I have displayed this in Ableton, in a drum rack, I will present in the second part later. I, they, they call it the mirror or mirror display. So, two times eight cells on the vertical, like this. So, this is a clone of a kick and hat, hat, open hat, and here I have the photo. Okay? In the middle, I have the kick without the hat, two snare, and my rim shot. Okay, so we can play it like this. One controller well set and I get access to all the pitches if I want and all the sound at the same time okay so of course this can be used to program the machine or to program it in Ableton this is like a minimal setup with just six samples okay and the way is to make them behave and more they call it humanized but 
behave more naturally. So for example, a snare, when you eat it um, low, it will not give that much high frequency. And when you eat it high, you will have the frequency. So example here. You see when I eat. With low velocity, we have a low sound, and with high velocity, it becomes brighter. This is set up into the machine, like for example, velocity will open the, the cutoff of the filter. I have one, one filter per track. Okay, so I have this on the snare, for example. Another example it's the tom. The tom, normally in uh, nature, when you eat it, the more you eat it hard, and the more it will slightly pitch up. So I have exaggerated this effect by affecting uh, on the tom track uh, velocity to influence the pitch of it. So for those who have this machine, you just, uh, if I remember well, function track or function pay pad menu. And in pad menu, you can select a destination for the velocity and the depth of this velocity. So let's hear how it works. When I hit low, it makes low sound and it pitch up the, the more I hit up. When we play like this, it can be cool to have on just one pad, the kick and the hi-hat at the same time. You see the display, the kick and hi-hat. It's like I would have to do this when I program. Another limitation I get over through this technique. To control all this, I have to create a MIDI track which will send the MIDI uh, information that goes through Ableton to my external machine here, the model sample. So I have set the MIDI channel in of the model samples on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 for the track. On uh, this MIDI track, I have set my controller on the MIDI form and I drop a drum, a drum rack, a blank drum rack. Let's say that for each of those 16 cells, I will have to set up uh, the destination of the MIDI of this cell. So when I hit it, I will have to say to Ableton where to send it outside of the computer to the external machine. And for it, we will use something called external instrument. In the first line, you will have MIDI 2. So for this example of the hi-hat, MIDI 2 electron model sample on the channel 3. Okay? I didn't complete the audio form because I have a lot of cells and I didn't want to select it again and again and again because we just need to have one of the cells taking the audio form to have it into the view meter okay so what i did i select like a fun, phantom uh, cell i never use this cell called audio out so i called it audio out on this one i tell it midi form uh, midi 2 excuse me because we need to set the midi 2 to set also the audio form. So I set it to whatever uh, channel. This is channel one, but it don't matter because you will never trick this cell, okay? It's just to say to Ableton, this MIDI have to go to the model sample. And I set the audio form, channel five and six, input of my audio card, okay? That way I have to set the audio form just one time. The second plugin I have had is a MIDI plugin you can find into MIDI effect, a simple one called pitch. And with this pitch, I will set the pitch of the sound when I hit my, my cell of i hat. For example, this one, I told it to be one octave below my original sound. Okay. If I select another cell, automatically, Ableton select this cell with a plugin and you see here is pitch zero semiton. For this one is pitch plus seven semiton. For this one is pitch minus seven semiton. Okay. 
So these are the two major uh, little plugin you will have to add on each cell. Okay. So the good thing is to build one cell and then you copy paste the same cell and change the name and change the MIDI channel if needed and uh, the fixed pitch of this song. After it, I have add another pitch effect and this pitch effect, you see it with this uh, green dot, is linked to a macro knob which is at the beginning of my drum rack here. And this macro knob uh, is limited, so you can limit the action of a macro knob. First, you right click on it and you assign it to the macro knob you need. So here the first one. And uh, if you leave it like that, the whole course of this macro knob will cover the complete course of this uh, pitch effect. And this pitch effect can go from minus 128 to plus 128 notes, which is uh, far too much. So to calibrate this to one octave, what I did here is go into the map display and I set it here. So it's impressive, you have a lot of this, but what I did, I just write one or create one cell and duplicate them and modify uh, slightly. So here you can see a kick pitch and underline kick pitch instead of uh, the maximum minus 128. I just tell it to, to go minus 12 and go to zero when my controller is full up. Okay. So I can't show it with the camera, but I have a controller here, uh, launch control innovation, and I have a fader assigned to this. Okay, that way I can play and change the pitch of each cell. Okay, I'm happy. So as I said in the first part of this video, uh, all is displayed in mirror. So those two kick are cloned, I add cloned, these are the same, just to make it easier to play. Okay. Here the tom are the only one which are not mirrored, I mean this. I put four pitch. And when I hit the tom, you see this one in minus 23. This one minus 19, minus 16, minus 12. And on the octave, I have this one. Okay, you get the idea. Just for the tom. And uh, so those tom are just one sample, always on channel 5, but I hit them on several uh, pitches. Yeah, it's a, a lot of good things can happen because we can use it just as a, a hub, um, audio and media hub, and continue to do the work on the machine. Or uh, we can make them work in team, for example, create the pattern here, or play and record without quantization, and do some correction, and have several variations of our pattern, and then record them into the machine. That way, if you don't know your machine very well, deeply, you can use your knowledge of Ableton and just when everything is right, you transfer it into the machine and everything is okay.